All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Team here, and this is BXJS Development Livestream. And uh, today we are going to delve into Gatsby. Hi, Discuss. Welcome to the stream. So um, this is actually a task that I've gotten from my current work. And uh, we have our website that is currently looks like this. And OK, I, I have like a bunch of stuff blocked, which actually shouldn't happen. Uh, probably should allow stuff, but uh, it's not the best one, like there's mixed content warnings and we're using typo three content management system that is managed by third party people and it's annoying to maintain. So it's like, if you wanna change data, some data you have to email them and tell like, hey, you know, there's like a changes in team. So please adjust this and that, which is annoying. So we're gonna self host that. And uh, yeah, so the idea is to do this using Gatsby. And there is another requirement here uh, before we go uh, further into that. Uh, hey, structures, welcome to the stream. So the requirement we have is uh, since we are data science and semantic web group, um, we are going to use the data in RDF, which is we did something similar on our old website. So if you go into the where was the edit button? Uh, right, there was the edit button. So we had the onto wiki backend, which is like if you go for person, you select someone and then you can see the source code. So it's actually in REF, right? So you can see, actually see the structured data that says, okay, this is a person URI, this is his room, this is his name, whatever, this is his email. And uh, we need to do the same because we are semantic web research group. So we have to sort of, uh, you know, eat our own dog food, so to say. So, um, Gatsby should generate the website, at least, you know, the stuff like teams and projects and uh, I guess publications as well and partners uh, from the structured data. So it should not simply be static website because it's going to be annoying to maintain. It's actually going to be a structured data and in our case, RDF. So this is something that does not exist. I tried searching for that. I know there is a plugin for Jekyll that is maintained by uh, my colleagues in the university, but uh, Jekyll turned out to be a bit too simple for us. So we stopped on Gatsby. And uh, yeah, let's just get started. So I have read Gatsby tutorials, I will tell you right at the beginning that I have no idea what I'm doing. I've never used Gatsby in my life before that. So this is, has to be fun. So let's just uh, go into a quick start. And uh, let's just I guess do that. So I already created a folder and opened um, VS code here. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, come on, where's my where's my terminal? Hello, there we go. Okay. So um, yeah, I guess I'm just going to go on a Windows side because why not? I don't think we're going to do anything uh, super fancy. So I'm going to use npx Gatsby CLI new and um, create a new site. I know that they support templates, but I guess we just go with a default one for now. Um, Gatsby. Okay, so it's going to be dice websites. Uh, hey, cut together. Welcome to the stream. All right. Uh, I think that should work. So if I didn't screw anything up, we should basically generate the nice uh, template and then we can delve into it and see how exactly it works. And what do we need to change? All right. Um, ah, stepper. Okay, it's you. <laughs> All familiar faces, right? Okay, well, welcome to the stream, man. Um, I, yeah, okay, I have to remember that it's you now. So <laughs> there might be some problems with my memory. So if I forget, I apologize in advance. <laughs> All right. I probably should disable the um, what do you call it the defender thing because it tends to make things a tad bit slower when you are developing. For some reason, I really hope they will resolve this with VSL two because it's like, on one hand, I don't really want to disable my um... Oh, God, it wants git. Oh, no. Oh, come on. Okay, so I actually have to run. No, wait, I thought I had git. Did I have git? Git minus v. Um, what was it minus minus version? I don't have git. Okay, so uh, I guess I don't have configured. I haven't configured my st uh, No, that's not what no, come on. Oh, right, they changed it to control C control V, right? So let me let me just configure my stuff real quick. Um, I I'm working 90% of time in the VSL, but maybe I should just switch with that. Hey, Kevin, welcome to the stream. 
All right. Uh, yeah, you know what? I have to configure the Git side on Windows anyway. So let's just uh, let's just do that. Because why not? Team Marmilov, there we go. And I guess we have to, we have to, um, right, it doesn't know F flag. So Mar, uh, what? No. <laughs> Come on. Yes to all, please. What are you, what? Okay, then. Um, you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna take a risk and I'm gonna go into VSL and just hope nothing blows up today. Because I am. Um, Tired of dealing with Windows bullshit. Uh, hey, Fronted Nexus, welcome to the stream. Um, Gatsby, Gatsby, CLI, new dice website. You know what? Let's just go. Let's just go with the Linux side. It's always a safe bet. I cannot wait for VSL two to be released. Uh, yeah, I could have right-clicked on the folder. That's that's true. I'm it's <laughs> I'm really bad with UIs, as you can see. <laughs> okay, but uh, seems like the the VSL side is working fine today, so no major issues. It's like whenever they update things, it all goes weird sometimes. Okay, uh, yes, we are gonna do, we, VSL 2 is the thing, I mean, it already exists, but you need to install the insiders build for it. So this is something I don't wanna do because I like my video games working. So if, if it would be in my development machine, like purely for development, I would actually go and install the insiders build, but since I like to play games, I don't want to do that. Okay, um, there we go. So we got our dependencies installing. Um, I talked about it on one of the podcasts, actually. There's like a ton of really cool changes coming, including a full uh, Linux kernel in it. So it's going to be like a proper Linux. And um, da -da 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 -da, where was it? Did new VSL commands. Mm. No, it wasn't here. Uh, it was, oh, it was an announcement, I think. Yeah. Yes. Yes. There you go. So there's like literal Linux kernel that is going to be shipping within Windows and uh, VSL is no longer going to be that um, thing that basically uh, translates the calls from Linux to Windows as in, you know, the reverse wine, what VSL one is. But the VSL two is going to be like a proper Linux subsystem within the Windows using Linux kernel to actually execute the calls, which is probably going to be a lot more stable. Okay, so we are going to go into Dice websites. I uh, yeah, you know what? I guess I probably should open that as a new project. Open folder um, Dice Dice website. There we go. Okay, good. So we scaffolded it. Uh, we got this thing going. Let me start the VSL again. Hey, Kepler, welcome to the stream. How's your internet, my man? Finally, you can watch me on a full resolution. <laughs> Pop OS could play Windows games. What is Pop OS? This is something I haven't heard. Um, okay, so let's see. So we got the project scaffolded. Uh, the author is Kyle Matthews, which I imagine is the author of the Gatsby starter. So I guess we would have to change that before, but you know, before changing any of that, let us see. So we got scripts, we got develop. So I guess, okay, yarn start actually seems to do develop. So we're going to do that. Right? So this theoretically should start the website. So you can finally distinguish my eyes from the glasses. <laughs> that's good to hear. I mean, that's a good ability to have. All right, okay, so we got compiled five pages. There is a GraphQL. Oh yeah, that was a thing, I completely forgot. Okay, so we got the starter compiled. Now let's have a look at how it actually looks. I know that Gatsby is based on React, so I imagine we're gonna see the React pages, exactly. We got the layout component and SEO components that I guess is the default one. So SEO is what? Is the GraphQL query and it uses React Helmet. Okay, so this is like your title and header and yeah, okay, cool. So this is straightforward. Right, uh, so we got layout, we got the title. Um, okay, and then we got the Gatsby config that basically makes magic happen. So there's our metadata. Got dice, uh, what was the title for our research group? Uh, it's just, you know what, let's just gonna be lazy and copy everything from here. We already have a title, right? I hope so at least. Title about. That is a terrible title. <laughs> okay. Um you're right. I guess we don't have a title, so um 
Yeah, let's just go dice research group. Why not? <laughs> just, go, just go with that. Keep uh, so description. Um, yeah, we have to. Yes, typo three. Uh, so the thing is that this is now hosted by the University of Paderborn, so we don't have to. You know, we didn't have to deal with that. And the original proposition from the university was like, hey, you know, let us handle the website. We do everything for you. You just have to tell us uh, basically the give us the content and we'll do everything. And then turn out there's like 25 edge cases and 200 annoyances that basically make it not very nice to uh, manage it. So we we're looking to, into switching uh, into Gatsby essentially and self hosted self built website. Okay, we don't I mean, I guess you can just copy this for a description. Uh, just do 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 do. I'm just gonna do that uh, author. Um, yeah, I guess Yama light for now, it doesn't matter. Just save that. So I, I guess there is a hot reload. And I guess this is yep. Okay, cool. It even hot reloads the config. This is really nice. All right. Uh, now going back here, whoops, I moved it a bit too much. So you're well, no, I mean, that's my literal job. Like I, you know, I typically do a bit more advanced stuff. Let's just put it this way more in R and D side, but we need a better website. And um, I was kind of free. So I was like, yeah, okay, I can do that. Okay, so let's see plugins, we got the helmet, we got the Gatsby source file system. So okay, this processes images, I imagine this embeds them or copies them to the static folder, we'll have to figure that out later. Gatsby transformer sharp, what does this do? Um, I know they have the nice plugins catalog over here. What is transformer sharp creates images sharp nodes from images. Oh, okay, so it allows you to use the sharp module to pre process images in I imagine in a optimized way. Okay, cool. That's straightforward. Uh, okay, plugin sharp is the same, I guess we got plugin manifest. So I imagine this is the manifest generation for the um, yeah, okay, web manifest. And there's a plugin offline, which we don't use, we don't need that. Okay, cool. I guess you know what, let's start by doing basic stuff. Let's start by just taking the um, taking the logo, taking the header and reformatting this a bit, I guess. So we got our header over here. Let's see. Um, I don't care about I mean, yeah, okay, you know what, let's leave the props in there. So we don't need backgrounds, we do need the margin, we do need the header, we can leave that we can do the site title. Do we? Um, no, we don't need the site title, we actually need an image and Oh, this is actually a data science group. Uh, this is a subheader. This is not exactly a title. But okay, you know what, for now, that's fine. So we actually will just add an image source over here. And you know what, I'm going to be super lazy. And I'm going to copy image address from here and do this. So we actually have an SVG, I imagine is going to be very big. Yeah, okay. That is a bit too big. So um, Again, probably rewriting styles to one style sheet or something among those lines would be better in the long run. But for now, that's fine. So let's say max height is like uh, 50 pixels or something This should be enough, right? And uh, yeah, so the color is black, right? Because it was on a dark background. Okay, and we want to change this. So I want to display flex, I guess and uh, flex direction is going to be column or is it row? No, it's row. I always mess those up. There we go. Okay, kind of getting there. Okay, and then padding add some padding on the right, um, like uh, 10 or something. That looks decent. And then we need to make this font size um, a bit smaller. So I don't know, we have um, 0.8 EM. Uh, whoops, I have to escape that. There we go. Nope, that's, that's wrong. There we go. Uh, that's still too big, maybe 0 0.7. And yeah, that looks fine. Okay, my eyes are bleeding when I see the style of coding. I mean, it's prototyping, it's not coding yet, right? So it's not going to be in a fine, like we are evaluating the technology, we're trying out seeing how it works. So it's not representative of what's going to be in the end, right? Well, I'm not going to write tests today, because there's no reason to do that. Oh, you mean how react doing things react doing things fine? What do you not like it about it? I mean, I'm inlining styles right now, which is not exactly nice. But other than that, it's 
you know what let's extract the styles can you here's a question uh css css modules do we have css module support wait a second gatsby maybe it's in there by default uh, css module support um css first developer that's heresy <laughs> I've heard a lot of complaints about CSS and JS, but the fact that it is uh, lintable is the best thing ever. Like if you look, for example, I think um, so far my favorite implementation is actually, uh, what do you call it? Svelte, th Svelte 3. So the way they work with CSS is absolutely mind blowing. The way that they can lint it and process it is really, really cool. Okay, so they, okay, they just support them out of the box. Cool. Uh, so we can just go ahead and do, okay, I guess let's create a folder called header. And uh, move the header there, please. Yes, thank you very much. Rename this to index. And uh, yes, I know you're failed. And then we're going to go with header module CSS. And I'm just gonna go. So take this and go okay this, this is gonna be dot header and yeah okay uh, it's gonna be like two two tons of things to fix and we're gonna say import styles from header css and this is gonna be class name styles header i think that should be sufficient uh, okay but it failed so we have to recompile it actually uh, it's like the difference between grilling a nice juicy chicken leg and chopping it down and making nuggets. Uh, cannot relate because I am a vegetarian, so I, I actually never in my life e eaten, you know, too much meat. I literally, like, I, <laughs> saying I'm vegetarian is actually wrong. It's more like I have an allergy on that. But uh, yeah, cannot relate to that statement. Okay, so this seems to be working. So I guess we just have to move that uh, out as well. So this is the header wrap. Let's call it header. I guess let's just go like this. So this is auto. Remove the things. Oh yeah, right. It should be. It's to be with a sec. Oh, man, this is slightly annoying, but okay. You know what? I'm gonna be better once we are done with this. So this is class name styles dot header um how did i call it i need my auto suggestion why is it not working header wrap there we go so this should still no it doesn't okay where is it it sets the css module should work right okay uh oh 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 right of course it screwed up the names right flex direction there we go and this should be margin bottom of course there we go now that should be better right no still no uh what are you complaining about now so this looks fine max with 960 oh because it needs px of course there we go okay this looks better cool uh so we did that i guess let's finish moving out the other stuff like it's good to know that it actually works but it's a bit annoying to migrate all of that i don't know if that's the best way of doing it but you know what for now it's fine uh, so let's call it ima um, image, yes. Da, 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 da. Um, so it's gonna be in PX. There we go. And class name styles image. So, right. I, you know what? I'm gonna leave it for now. It's like slightly nicer. We know that it works. That's good. Okay, so we got the header going. Now we need the menu i guess right so we need the navigation menu let's call it navbar js i'm just gonna be super lazy and copy this stuff so we don't need styles we don't need uh, header i'm just gonna leave the div here we don't need heading we need links so we need a bunch of links here right it's essentially all I want. I don't need prop type validation on this one because there's not going to be any props nav bar. And we don't need site title. So this doesn't matter. Okay, save this and now we need to include it. So we have the layout, I guess that would be a good place. Import uh, nav bar from nav bar, right? Uh, oh, okay, it cleans up the unused 
imports on its own, so you cannot save before you finish this. What do you not like? Styles is not defined. Uh, am I using style? Yes, I am using styles. Let's not do that. Let me just do this, I guess. Okay, cool. So we got that. Uh, looks absolutely terrible. We can remove this color black. We got actually a link. It is super. Oh, because I changed. Okay, I, you know what? I can kill this style from here, right? We don't really need that. There we go. That looks fine. Okay, so what we need is uh, we need to copy this navigation. Um, so, um, right. Let us do this. Um, how do I do that? I can do it like this, right? And uh, go to the beginning, copy link. Uh, why do you auto paste it? God damn it. There we go. Nice and easy, save it. So now we have a nice set of links that looks absolutely terrible. But it's fine. So we're gonna go display flex and we're just gonna go uh, flex, I guess flex direction doesn't matter here. Yep. Um, what was it justify? I always forget the flex. No, it doesn't. Okay. Flex, uh, flex box stretch content. There was a field that does this, but I never for the life of me can remember what is it. Uh, da -da -da, flex grow, no, flex shrink, no, flex basis, justify content, space between. Okay, there we go. This is what I wanted, space between. I think this is what I wanted. There we go. That's kinda okay. Flexbox.help. Oh, that is fa Oh, that is really nice. Thank you for the link. Yeah, this is helpful. Okay. Cool. Um, so yeah, we don't need that anymore. Right. So I guess we have to do it like the other one and say max with uh, nine six or probably a good maybe I should have put it into header itself. But yeah, I guess it would be a good idea to actually just put it into the header rather than the layout. So let's see, we can uh, kill it from here and uh, kill it from here. And then in the header, we go, okay, we are, no. No, wait, did I just kill the wrong thing? Yes, I did. <laughs> Damn it. There we go, okay. So header, um, nav bar over here. That is gonna be nav bar from the top and it should be. I think over here, right? Nav bar. And I guess we would have to adjust the header wrap. Mm, yeah, okay. So we gotta, yeah, we gotta adjust the max width 960. Come on. Uh, and why is it not, why is it not in the middle? What is happening? Am I just missing something? Display, f yeah, okay, max with, oh, I guess more margin, we need the margin thing, right? Or is it, no, it's, it's not the padding, right? So it's gonna be the margin. Margin uh, zero auto, oh, whoops, that is totally broken. There we go, okay. Cool, so this is kind of, kind of looking like what we want. Now, here's the deal. So I want, in addition to having the whole menu and everything, I want the pages like the static ones to be generated from the markdown. So here's the question. Can I just be like uh, index MD and uh, just go, okay, so um, this is essentially what we want, right? Uh, let me just rewrite this to markdown real quick. So yeah, 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 okay. Stuff here. Okay, I don't care about the images for now. Uh, so the image, so this actually takes image. F oh, okay, because we pre-process them using um, Gatsby plugins, the images end up in the GraphQL, so you can actually query them and create the components with images. That's that's an interesting approach. But okay, you know what, for now, let's just focus on doing the markdown. So imagine right now this no longer will, wait, does it just work out of the box? Are you for, yeah, you for real right now? Because if that works out of the box, this is already amazing. 
Okay, let's see. So it compiles everything that works, that runs, yes, and... No, that's the old version, right? So I guess wait until bundle is finished. Right, okay, page of... Okay, so it does not have the markdown by default. Let's see, markdown. So there is transformer remark. Okay, I guess it's not as easy. So let's see if they have any tutorials on that topic. Uh, transformer plugins, additional theme. Okay, we don't care about themes. We need WordPress e-commerce, do, do, do. writing documentation with docz. Okay, you know what? Let's go Gatsby markdown. Uh, adding markdown pages. I think I already opened it once. Uh, front matter, yes, okay. Gar okay, we already have the Gatsby source file system. So we need to add it again to resolve the markdown pages. I guess it actually would be a good idea to put markdown pages separately because essentially we assume that we're gonna have people who are gonna edit the website, but we don't want them to touch the source code because they shouldn't care about that, right? Let me make a folder that is gonna be called uh, pages, right? And I'm just gonna move that index MD over there. There we go. Okay, now we go into the config and I guess it should be somewhere on top, I imagine. So basically, my reasoning is that they executed an order, they appear, so we wanna pre-process the pages first, right? Uh, name P, uh, yep, we already have pages, I think. No, no, we don't, okay, cool. So that should work. Right, so we resolve that. Uh, so, the, But this will only give us the content of the page, right? So I imagine, yeah, okay, we need the transformer remark. Yarn adds, I imagine we're gonna add it as development. No, not as development, okay. I guess we don't really have any development, like we're not running it in production, right? It's gonna be a static website. So that makes sense. Okay, so we do that. And I imagine once it's done, we're gonna, okay, just include it for, like, is that really all that's needed? Um, source, yeah, so we do that. Oh, right, they also use the front matter formats that allows you to define like bunch of title and home page and path is root. Okay, save that, yarn start. Okay, that's not all, so we need something else. We need a template. Okay, uh-huh, templates, block template. Uh, okay, source, let's do that. New folder, okay, let me stop this, I guess. So, templates, I guess by default, it doesn't know how to render markdown, so we have to give it a way to do that, right? Let's call it a uh, page markdown page template. I mean, let's just call it markdown page because we're already in templates folder, right? So that should be fine. Okay, let's copy this whole thing, paste it here. Let's see what happens here. Okay, so save that. So we import GraphQL from Gatsby. I imagine this is some sort of a GraphQL helper. We export page query and this query takes common remark processor with front matter path. So we p select by path and then go, okay. So we just take the HTML and take front matter additional data. I really don't know why I don't like Markdown. Why don't you like Markdown? It's a very nice format, very easy to write. Okay, uh, so then we go template. We get the data as a property and then from data we extract basically whatever the GraphQL selected and just Render it, uh, which seems super convenient. The only thing is we should render it uh, using, we should render that using our layout, right? So we don't need that. Okay, I imported too many things. So this is gonna be layout, yes, please. Uh, this is gonna be our content. And instead of rendering the front matter title and date like this, we should go uh, this way, right? So it should be say sale, and then this is gonna be front matter title. I probably should use date somewhere, but for now that's fine. Okay, so we defined the template. Now we have to somehow make GraphQL, uh, sorry, the Gatsby user, right? 
uh, create static pages using Gatsby Node.js create a page API. Okay, so we're gonna write our own thing in Gatsby Node. Okay, let's see. So how does this work? So we got Gatsby Node. It is currently empty. That's fair enough. So we take this thing and put it over here. And uh, judging by tutorial, that's actually all we have to do. So let's see what this actually does. So we have the path. We take the create page from actions. I guess we could just do this, right? This should be fine. Um, then we resolve. Okay, so this should be our templates, what I call it markdown page. Markdown page, right? Okay, then we select all markdown uh, with limit 1000, sort them by date. Uh, select the path to them. And then I, I mean, we could use a sync await here, I guess. But um, right, 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 then okay, we can return the promise. Right. So I assume we couldn't rewrite this into a sync await, which just would be a bit nicer. So wait GraphQL and then da, 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 da. Um, So we do that and then if result contains errors, we return promise reject, that should still be fine. And if it's all good, then we just map it. Uh, is there any errors? Doesn't seem like errors, right? So it should be fine, I think. Yarn starts. Okay, so and then we just, yeah, create page using path and template. Probably rename this, oh, whoa, 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 what, what did I probably screwed something up, right? Uh, unexpected token. Okay, where? What did I miss? Where's my ES lint? Why is it not complaining? ES lint. What? Okay. Okay. Oh, God damn it. You. All oh, right. Because I'm running with within the VSL. Okay. True. Wrong path to templates. Is it? That's path resolve source templates markdown page. Seems correct. I feel like I just missed the bracket somewhere. Uh, this looks fine. This looks fine. What, what am I? What am I missing? Da, 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 da. This looks okay. Oh, is it because it doesn't know how to destruct this? God damn it! Did it? Wait, but that? No, it should. Oh, okay, you cannot destruct it in this way. I that's yeah, that's my mistake. Okay, I think this should fix it. So I guess the way I wrote the destruction initially there that is not actually valid. <laughs> So no, don't repeat after me. Okay, there we go. Right, there are some, what is this? Cannot create page of undefined or null. What did I, did I screw it up again? Actions, GraphQL, oh, actions, there we go. Okay, that should fix it and restart. Okay, yeah. All right, I'm an idiot. Uh, of course, this is a named, uh, it's not, positional, this is what should have been here. There we go. Now if we start, this should start working, right? Come on. Okay, there is a different error now, which is a good thing. Uh, there was an error in your GraphQL query, cannot query all markdown remark on type query. Okay, so here's the question we did. Transform a remark. Um, so why does it not all markdown remark? Did they change something and not document it? Let's see, transformer remark. This is what we want to see and uh, view on GitHub. Ah, oh, come on, I just want to. <laughs> Thank you, Windows, very helpful. There we go. Okay, uh, parsing algorithm all markdown remark. Yes, that looks correct, right? All markdown remark. Uh, on type query. So why don't you like this? What is happening? Okay, error must be an object. Right, child error fails because error must be an object. That that doesn't make any sense. Um, 624. Yeah, so it is definitely this GraphQL error. And why is it erroring out? So it says cannot query. Okay, you know what? Let's just try uh, commenting all of this out, right? 
So theoretically, if we start it now, it should compile and run because we don't really do anything to our Markdown files. If we configured everything correctly. Still, okay, GraphQL error. Markdown remark unknown field. Okay, but it runs. So now if we go into the GraphQL, it does not have all, so it doesn't have the markdown stuff here, which is, uh, why does it not have it? So we got the file. So, okay, let's try to go again through that. So we got the file system, right? So we got this, we got the remark transformer and inserted it after the file system. That's also something we did. We wrote this, we wrote this. So what is happening? Why is it not happy about that? Am I just missing something? Anyone in the chat worked with this? Anyone knows why it throws an error? Remark, yeah, okay, that seems fine. All markdown remark, yeah, that seems fine as well. Table of content, we don't need that. Okay, troubleshooting, um, right, okay, we don't care about this either. Hey, Bako, welcome to the stream. All right, so why doesn't it work? Where is my markdown? Uh, is my path? Okay, wait a second. Here's the question. We don't need that. Uh, we don't care about this for now. That's be config. Did I not save it all this time? Wait a second. Am I just an idiot and haven't saved it? Is that the problem? Because if it is, this is going to be very disappointing. <laughs> Okay, doesn't seem like we got any more errors now. Um, right, it compiled. Was it really just because... God damn, I didn't save the config. <laughs> oh, yes, I've been meaning to turn on autosave for quite some time, but always forget... You know what? I'm going to do this now. <laughs> I'm going to do this now because... Save. Uh, where's the autosave? Format on save. Uh, autosave. On focus after delay on focus you know what on focus change let's go on focus change that sounds like reasonable right as soon as i switch away from the um window it should auto save okay cool so now this is working so basically if i uncomment this it should start working as well because if i wouldn't screw it up initially this basically would work too there we go <laughs> okay okay no more errors that's a good start Right, and uh, theoretically, index.js should now be, hey, it works. Awesome. Okay, so we actually got the markdown working. You know what? I'm going to commit that uh, because I need that anyway. Um, so let's see what we changed. Git adds, git commits, basic setup with markdown, right? Um, what is my password? This is my password. Okay, cool. So we did that. That is now working, which is great. So, right, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. we did that, index is working, I guess. Oh, did actually this stuff, yeah, so it does, it, did it render the diff? Yes, it did, okay, cool. Oh, it actually, it actually rendered it, <laughs> well, close enough. Okay, it actually rendered it as a React component, which makes perfect sense when you think about it, but uh, this is not exactly what we want. There we go, okay, that should be better. Um. Let me just amend this real quick. There we go. Okay. Um, right. So what we do, what we need to do now is we need to create our own custom source, right? So as I said, we are going to have uh, data that should be converted to pages automatically. So I'm going to create a data folder over here and I'm going to create um, what? Come on. People folder. And we're going to create, I'm going to, I'm just going to take one of the people, one of the guys from, uh, no, from team, uh, I guess we're just going to go, where's our edit resource. Just going to take one of the people from over here, Bob, like, yeah, Simon worked last time. Let's just take him, take the source and Simon bin dots, um, turtle, I guess, I uh, know, whatever. It's fine. I can live without that. That is way too many tabs. So this is fine. Uh, right. We don't need, we need that many prefixes. 
So we use the fourth prefix, we use OV sites and AKSW. That's literally it. There's like 200 namespaces. We don't use this as far as I can tell. We don't use this. Why is there so many prefixes? This definitely looks like a bug. Okay, so we do both. We use, use XSW, we use, uh, what was it else? So there's both, there is OV site and XSW, okay. Oh, there's also projects prefix. There's the projects prefix, okay. Let me just clean this up real quick. We don't want all this garbage in here. It's cause site. So we use the site prefix. Ah, and uh, yeah, okay. OV prefix and I think that is it. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna just kill that. Um, sir, let me let me quickly TTL validator. Uh, short validator, please validate that. Prefix AKSW org is missing. Okay. Um, I guess I missed some of those. Let me just make sure that my turtle is valid and then we can try to parse it with JavaScript and create GraphQL out of it. Okay, cool. So this is correct. Right. Uh, now here comes the tricky part. So we need to take those data things, right? I guess in our case, we should have a different prefix here. Mm, yeah, right. So let's go. Um, so this is yeah, we okay, you know what, whatever. So this is going to be our prefix that is going to be the let's call it websites or whatever. And in our case is going to be localhost 8080, right? So essentially, um, website. So essentially, this is our base URL, right? So for the person, so it's going to be localhost slash Simon bin. And uh, then we're going to have all the other properties, which we'll have to read and render it as a proper template. So I guess we could start with a very basic. So, you know, just mimicking essentially how the markdown works. Let's go through this first. So this is, uh, let me just do this markdown processing. And this is uh, default Gatsby plugins. I just leave them there. And then we go like, okay, it's gonna be RDF processing, right? And we're gonna, okay, start with this, go into the, um, let's call it RDF data. And it's gonna be data, right? So we take all of this and essentially load it into memory. Now, the next thing we do is we need this Gatsby transformer something, I guess, transformer turtle in this case. And the question is, how the hell do you write it? Is there a tutorial for that? Mm, da -da -da, additional tutorials, uh, transformer plugins. There we go. Right. Da -da 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 -da. Pages. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Gatsby transformer remark. Okay. This is using uh, create a list, markdown files. This is also using, right? No, this is not. Okay. Um, Gatsby transformer plugin. Uh, creating a, okay, so it, it was there somewhere, but <laughs> just not in the same doc. Okay, that's fine. Create and transform a plugin. Da -da -da. So there are two types of plugins, source and transformer. Source is the data. So in our case, we just use the file system source, which is perfectly fine. And transform takes the source data and transforms it into other stuff. Okay. Uh, it makes perfect sense. How does transformer plugin? Uh, yeah, okay. So just like a source plugin, transformer plugin, normal NPM package. Here's the question. Can I use not an NPM package, but rather a folder? We can try it anyway. Um, so let's call it Gatsby transformer RDF. Why not? And then we need so I guess uh, CD Gatsby transform RDF NPM and it minus Y uh, touch Gatsby no, uh, node JS, I think was it right? It was Gatsby node JS. Yep. Okay. And uh, do, 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 transform a plug is normal. It has package JSON with optional dependencies as well as Gatsby node JS file where, okay, Gatsby transformer YAML plugin. It's actually a good starting point. Let's, you know what? Let's just go look at the source code over here. 
because it feels like it should be relatively straightforward to do that, right? So it seems like it's just like literally one file. Index.js, what is index? No op, why do you have it then if it's no op? Um, do they point to the main file somehow? Engine script repositories doesn't really seem so. Okay. Source, Gatsby node. Okay, so we create Gatsby node and uh, it has on create node function that it exports. Okay, cool. So make sure data source, data is sourced. Okay, yes, we do that. They're exposed in your, okay. So actually once we included this, we should be able to restart, right? And check that our RDF file is actually in the GraphQL. Like I really like the idea of providing GraphQL endpoints that you can just query to see if your data is there. This is like a really neat feature. It also makes a lot of things easier because you essentially have a, a unified interface for accessing your data, right? Okay, so we got all file and edges node, right? Is what we want and we want dear and name. We got dice pages index and we got people same and bin. There we go. So it is there. Cool. It's working. Let me just move it over here. We don't need that anymore. Um, so we did that. Now we have a file node to work with. Node internal. Oh, okay, so there's like internal stuff. I guess this is so we can do that and that will show us everything. Okay, so this gives us content digest, content file description, file owners, media type, text turtle. Oh, it even detects the type properly. Okay, that's really cool. So we don't even have to think about basically figuring out what files we work with. We can just, okay, I don't need that anymore. I don't need that. Need that. I need, no, I don't need that either. Uh, so we actually need to work with Gatsby node over here. Right. And um, okay, so we have this thing, right? I guess let's just follow the tutorial, I guess. Uh, YAML. Okay, we don't need that. Right. So this is the very basic. This is the very basic version of it. So we got the node, we got load node content. We only need to yeah turtle. So we only uh, for now, we're only going to work with text turtle, right? And if it's not turtle, we're going to return. I so it did detect correctly. If I remember media type text turtle. Yep, that looks fine. Okay, if it is load node content node. Uh, okay, so we load the node content. And then we need to parse it. I guess in our case, it was n3 js that allows us to work with RDF in JavaScript. So we're going to use that. Um, da, 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 let me do so go into Gatsby. Yes. Um, maybe it's a good idea to it's a good idea to move it out to a different now you know what for now it's fine. So yarn ads and what was it and three JS or just in three just in three. Okay. Okay, cool. So we got that we got the package JSON. Yep, that seems fine. Okay. Um, now what do we need to do? We need to actually import. How do you load the files? Hell if I remember. Um, stream parser, I don't care about stream parser. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we can do that, right? But before that, we need the n3 parser and this is require n3. And in this case, we can just simplify that a bit and say, okay, import parser from it. And then we create new parser. So we already have, we don't need the stream where you have it. So we can save the part, I guess creating parser for each node would be better. So create a new parser, we parse content, I assume parse also accepts. Yeah, okay, it accepts the string. And there's a callback, which is not exactly convenient, but we can work with that. Uh, okay, so we have the callback, which will return us quads and prefixes, or is it just one quad? Here's the question, what does actually return? Okay. Um, so I was a function over here, it says error quad prefixes. And uh, console log error quad 
prefixes, right? Okay. So in theory, if I kill all of that, and if we just do yar, oh wait, I need to include it into the uh, over here, right? So we got the data, and then I need to say that we want Gatsby. I wonder if that will work. I think it's like if it just requires them, it should work, right? Yarn starts. See if it blows up. Yeah, it did blow up. Why? Gatsby, uh, perhaps you need to install it as a package. Okay. I guess it, so I guess we need to link it or something. All right. Well, we can do that. That's not a big problem. Um, your link. There we go. Uh, yes. Okay. Your link gods be for come on, come on. Ah, okay. It just does not a complete God damn it. There we go. I just want this. Thank you very much. And I think that uh, I screwed up start somehow. So this should now at least execute and find the plugin correctly. Okay, enable to find transformer RDF. Did I name the package correctly? Uh, Gatsby transformer RDF. Yes, I did. Um, how, why don't you ls no, uh, whoops, whoops, that is not what I wanted to press. I wonder if it's, no, but I linked it, right? Um, that what, uh, Gatsby. Oh God, okay. No, there it is, it is linked. Transformer. Did I mistyped it maybe? Maybe that's the problem. This is probably the most common cause of bugs that I have is that I just type it poorly. Now that seems correct. Okay, yarn list, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 that is a long list, oh no. Okay, yarn list, depth, does it accept depth arguments? Yeah, oh God, there is so much. Grab. Gatsby. Let's do that. And Gatsby transformer. It is not there. Does it really want me to? I mean, okay, yeah, sure, we can add that. Um, come on, Freel, just let me. You know what? I can just do this, right? So I can install it from the folder. And uh, in this case, Okay, so this definitely should work. It's a bit sad that we couldn't use a link, but you know what, what? No, what? Am I just missing something? Is there something else that it needs to have in package JSON or whatnot to work? Um, okay, uh, package JSON, let's see. So there is name, description, version, author box, dependencies, dev dependencies, keywords, license, scripts, engines. No, it doesn't have anything. Pure dependencies, Gatsby. Yeah, that makes sense. Why doesn't it work? Um, we got the Gatsby Node.js. We got the export thing. File content, parse YAML. All right, okay, okay, now we will come back to that. So let's see, this is the data, this is the file source, yes, 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 whatever. Gatsby note, uh, we did that. So why does it not? Uh, oh, is it still linked? Is that was why it errored out? Was it still using the link? Wait a second. No, but I mean, you can install from the folder, right? And node modules, Gatsby. Oh, no, 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 transformer. Okay, now it's properly installed. So I guess it just doesn't play well with links for some reason. I thought it was a bit weird. No, it still doesn't work. Come on. Gatsby transformer ref. We do have that name here, right? Right. And let's um, let me think. Node modules. Gatsby transformer ref. Right. Package JSON. James Fair. 
Is it because there's a main definition in it? Can it can can it be this simple? Can it just this? So if I da, 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 come on, where's my ER ads? I mean, it might just look into index, right? Instead of looking for Gatsby nodes, it might be how Gatsby works, but uh, so, okay. I know I had yarn start somewhere because they did not have a main definition in their uh, package JSON, but that doesn't help. Okay. Um, da -da -da, YAML, whatever. So let's see, what am I missing? Name, description, version, author, box, dependencies, dev dependencies, keywords, license, peer dependencies. Yeah, it doesn't seem like they have anything special in here. Why doesn't it? Why are you not working? Uh, to, 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 node actions, plugin options, create node, transform object. Did I, here's the question, Gatsby nodes. No, this is correctly named because it even highlighted. Publish. No, I don't want to publish it. Come on. Like I want to develop it in place. That's the thing, right? Is I don't want to publish it. Um, okay. Yarn remove. Um, got um, is it? Yes, it is in my clipboard. So we remove it, right? So this cleans it. Okay. So if we start this now, we should get an error that it is not found, which is correct. Right. Um, yarn link, can I? So I already linked it, I already package called register. This command had no effect. Right, if you then, okay. What if I link it again? Like it should resolve, right? It's just weird. Resolve plugin. Okay. Uh, so the problem is in resolve plugin. Let's, let's, I guess, let's have a look how Gatsby resolves plugins. <laughs> this is very confusing. It seems like it should work, but okay. Uh, we need a function that is called resolve plugin. There we go. That was easy to find. Hey, Heli, Heli bloody. I <laughs> I hope I read that correctly. Hey, hey, bloody, welcome to the stream. All right, let's see, where is our resolve plugin function? There we go, plugin name root deer. So it takes the root deer, takes the plugin name, it checks plugin, uh, only find plugins where we're not given an absolute path. So you can give it an absolute path. Uh, okay, that simplifies things a lot. Uh, no. Remove um, node modules. Did it actually remove it? Transform or DF? There we go. Okay, we killed that. So essentially, that means we should be able to just go ahead and say. Um, so instead of this transform or DF, we go what? We go website dice. Yeah. Uh, um, Gatsby is a static website generator. Uh, and uh, we are trying to make it eat REF in this case. Okay, so if it's an absolute path, then it shouldn't try to resolve it and should just use it as is. No, when able to find plugin, perhaps you, what, what? Hey, is this sync? Um, root deer internal require resolve path, deer name require plugin name. Right, required source, root deer, nickel null, plugins, plugin name. Ah, okay, yeah, you, you are right. We can try to put it into plugins folder. Plugins, put it in there. There we go. No, what, you didn't move it? Hello? All right, yes, okay, I can move it myself. Uh, plugins. Permission did, what do you mean? Oh, is it because I have it open? Likely because I have it open. What? I'm sorry, what? Uh, yeah, right, I had another file open. Does it help now? No, it do Come on, for real. 
You just close everything and then go like plugins, move. No, why? What do you mean permission denied? Clean up node modules. Uh, that's a good, you know what? I'm just gonna wipe them completely. It might be because, yeah, I think yarn actually might lock it because yarn on link. Uh, I think we need to go into it and do yarn on link. There you go. Yeah, 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 I know the operation is not permitted because it was locked. I think now it should move, right? No, still not. Okay. Why? Plugins? No. Um, what was the list? Cut that. Why does Yarn never have the uh, aliases for anything? Oh God, come on. No, 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 no. Steps zero. Still too much. Um, do we have Gatsby? You know what? I'm too lazy. Grab Gatsby. So wait, wait, that is, oh, you mean in the, you think there, wait, oh yeah, but that shouldn't matter. Should it? Did it just moved it? <laughs> Thank you. It turns out it was node modules. I have no idea why, but that actually fixed it. Okay, uh, let us try this again. So now, theoretically, if I just give it plugin name, that should start working, right? What? Oh, God damn it! right. Now we have to install plugins back. Uh, sorry, install dependencies back, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, now you're gonna complain about the prettier C. Copy this there. There we go, just use the consistent prettier C. Thank you very much. What are you not happy about now? Okay. 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 We're good. Let's see if that works. N3 is missing. Is it? Oh yes, it is missing. You are right. I mean, let's see if it actually loads. Yes. Now it has an N3 error. Yarn add N3. So for now, I'm just going to add it to the project and uh, later on split it into a separate package. If we see that it actually is viable. Okay. Um, yarn start. Come on, seems like it's finally working. So we should actually now, there we go. So we see the quads. All right, so it actually uh, error, quads, prefixes, name nodes. Okay, so we got the name node predicates, a literal, okay. All right. Uh, okay, so we got this. I guess we need to now somehow send this. So we are only interested in quad to be honest. And we need to, we don't care about this. So we are gonna have, uh, whoops, that is a wrong subject predicate object, right? Wrong quad. What I said, there we go. Okay, um, why is it, why is there error warnings in here? Wait a second, Let's see, is there ES lint RC or something? No, there's a pretty RC, but why does it complain? There is, dev dependencies prettier. I, okay, what, you know what, whatever. Don't even care right now. Okay, so we got this, we got this object predicate object. And uh, whoops, no, clear that. Right, so how do we insert that into the GraphQL now? So yes, we got the parsed content. Uh, subject is always, okay, you know what? Let's, let's just do this, console log subject. Uh, yes, I guess I can just copy this, right? So we wanna see SPO. Yarn start, please. Okay, I guess I'm, you know what? I'm just gonna copy the output 
to a new file so that we have it as a reference. And then we can figure out how to properly insert it into GraphQL so that we can actually query it. Okay, uh, where is, I'm sorry, what? Where's my output? Uh, warning, warning, Ali, yes, yes, yeah. Where's my outputs? What happened to, <laughs> wait a second. Is it because uh, error quads prefixes, right? Does it needs the specific function signature, otherwise it won't react? Is that what happens? How is it not logging anything anymore? What is happening right now? I am very confused. Okay, um, let me revert that and see if that worked. So it worked before, right? We had the outputs. We heard all of that. Thank you very much. Uh, we can save. Yes, yarn starts. So does it cache the plugins somehow? Is that what happens? But if it caches them, then we should still see the old output, right? <coughs> Apologies. Where's my output? Why did it only happen? So I guess it caches the um, plugin results. Let's be cache. Debugging cache issues. Uh, okay, so I guess we can just. Uh, okay, let me think. Or um. Uh, cache caches. God, I cannot see anything there. Um, God, this freaking color scheme. And I guess there is Gatsby transform or yeah, okay, so this is the but it doesn't have anything in it. Okay. Well, I mean we can still do this cache, right? So we can kill the cache and then go subject predicate predicate object from quads and then we just log that. So theoretically, now that the cache is cleared, it should regenerate that again and we should see the, the actual triples, right? There we go, okay. There is subject of undefined. Okay, so we have to check so that the quad is actually quad. How it could be not a quad? Um, wait, how is it possible that it returns empty? Right, um, console log, let's do some ghetto debugging. <laughs> there we go, okay, rmrf cache yarn start. Is that like, does N3JS not guarantee safety? It's like, I might as well read everything myself then. Uh, error quad, oh, oh, it returns prefixes as a separate call that does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, sure, why not? Okay, um, okay, but we don't really care about prefixes to be honest, so we can just copy that, paste it over here, clear that, and in our case, that means, so that means the quad can be empty which means that if no quad, we just ignore, right? And uh, man, expect it to be error to be, oh yeah, okay, okay, okay. If error, I mean, if error, we don't care. If this, we get quad. Okay, uh, so now that we get this, okay, so in this case, prefix, this is something we don't care about. And this is the things we get. So we get, it can be a name note, I guess all of the, so subject and predicate can only be a named note, which means we get ID from them, right? Um, I guess we could just say ID, subject ID, 
ID is predicate ID and then object is something that can either be console log uh, subject ID predicate predicate ID and then object. What do you not like? Place with okay. Uh, you know what? I'm fine with that. Clear cache, yarn start. So theoretically, we now should get two URIs and an object at the end, which can either be a URI or a literal. Perfect. Okay. So paste that here. Stop that, clear that. Right, so we do that. Now objects. Objects are either literal or name nodes. If it's a literal, there's also, so we don't actually care if it's a literal or an a node, I think. We basically just care about the value, right? So it can be ID object. Ah, uh, you know what? I can just do that, right? So I can just be like subject predicate objects. We just care about the values. Okay, now how do we add that into the, uh, how do we add that into the GraphQL? That's the interesting bit, right? So creating transformer, we got this, we got the YAML, create nodes, YAML node, okay. So I guess this is what we're gonna do. And where's this create node coming from? Node, uh, create node action. Okay, on create node, so we need the actions thing, all right. Actions thing, yes. We need create node ID and create node digest as well for some reason. I'll, yeah, I'll take that. So save this, okay. And then we need this transform object uh, thing. So I guess we can define it here or something. To, to, to const transform object. I mean, theoretically it can be a global function. It just needs this create node and create parent child. Uh, so I, those are coming from where? From actions, okay. I mean, I don't need to distract anything. I can just use them using the dot notation, that's fine. Parent node, child node, YAML node. So in this case, this is gonna be called REF node. Parent is gonna be nodes. Content is gonna be create digest. What, uh, what is the, what does create digest do? Transform object, object, object ID. Where does create digest coming from? Right, okay, I guess it's time to go into the source code of the actual transformer to see what is this create digest. Or is this create digest from the, this is not the function, create content digest. Where is this coming? Oh, it is a function from the, how is it? Okay, I mean, sure, fine, let's just try that. Okay, create node creates. So this is basically all we want. So we want to pass object ID and type. Mm. Okay, so the thing is that the graph, uh, sorry, the RDF is representation of a graph, right? So the, mm, how do we properly model that? I mean, in our case, this is just one resource, the resource with ID subject that has field predicate with a specific from a value object, right? So this is the, how do we model that? So how do they model the YAML? What do they do with YAML here? So ID bio, uh, node ID. And then they have the bio, okay. So in this case, the object with a unique ID. Let me think, how would you, so yes, the ID in our case is gonna be the subject, right? So we are gonna say transform object, uh, subject is our ID. Now this is the ID actually. And uh, and what was the last one type? What do they pass in the type? Transform objects. So this is the ID. 
Okay, yeah, that's actually, no, but we will definitely have a subject because there is no such thing as a resource without the resource URI. And then in this case, we can just, yeah, so this is node name YAML. Um, camel, okay, uh, we don't have the law dash as dependency, right? But I guess they do, so that should theoretically work fine. Okay, so this is, yeah, now we need to assemble the object, which would mean that object should be, ah, here's the thing, right? Because we have to actually assemble object in advance because we get those quads one by one rather than all at once uh right is there here's the question so this parse function parse function gives the callback for every quad which is not helpful we actually want it to give us a callback once it is completely done can it do that i'm guessing not and we'll have to come up with a hacky ways around it which is annoying as hell uh god okay Okay, yeah, so this, yeah, instead of finalizing callback, they just give out the prefixes. Right, great, okay. Fine, we can go with that. Okay, so we create the parser, we create the object over here, right? Um, let's say that the const subject is gonna be empty for now. And if there is no quads, then this is exactly where we want to call the transform object, right? Okay, and in this case, we're just gonna say that object from subject equals, no, not subject, predicate equals object. And uh, say this before we do that, let me just console log all done. Let's just uh, inspect the object and see how exactly it looks. So we do that and we also, oh, 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 oh. That is, that is definitely not what we want. So results and call it result subject, right? Ah, right, and it has to be that. Okay. Um, so if not result subject, we just have to assign it once because the subject is the same everywhere. Just do that, right? And uh, all done, result and result subject. I guess let's swap them places. There's gonna be a bit more easier to read. Um, so we kill the cache. Yarn starts. Okay, if I didn't screw anything up, we should see a nice object with properties. Hmm. Okay, cannot access subject before initialization. Did I? Yes, I did screw up. Okay. <clears throat> Makes perfect sense. Right, um, let's try that again. All right, and where is our, I guess it was cached again, god damn it. Cache seems strange, even though the plugin actually failed, it stopped processing other, I guess it's because the files plugin cache actually is there. This is probably what's affecting it, right? Now that I'm thinking it. Come on. Where's my output? So if not quads, there should be a log that says all done and there should be our result object, but I don't see anything. Oh no, there it is. And the object is empty. Well, wait a second. Oh, God damn it. I'm an idiot. <laughs> right, uh, yeah, okay. Okay, we're getting there. Almost done. 
So once this works, we can essentially call this transform object function that will write that into the GraphQL. There we go. That looks, uh, no, that looks terrible because there's this bloody quotes there. Oh boy, okay, how do we go about it? So this is URIs, we know that. And if it's, a, so I guess if it's a literal, is there like an N3JS utils for working with literals? Why is it always such a pain in ass to work with RDF? Uh, okay, da 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 writer, brr 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 brr. Storing, no, I don't care about storing, about care about reading. And it doesn't seem like there's any utils, so what can we do? Well, let me think. I So there is the name node and literal. Are those actually classes? And I just do like type of. So we got term, we got name node and name node small is, what is this? Is this a class or is that? It's a factory. Okay, and I can import the inter, oh, there's an internal data. Oh, why do you have to be like this? Why is semantic web world always so obsessed with overcomplicating things? All right, uh, coming back to this. So we need, here's the question. So wait a second, um, just a question. Note, JSON parse test. Right, okay, so no, wait, the, 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 we wanna parse this, right? Okay, so we can actually apply, try to apply parse. This, I mean, this is a very hacky way, but I think that should work. So we basically say, value object, try value JSON parse object. So we just try and parse it and then catch. And uh, I guess it will be better to do it like this. Value, there we go. Uh, back in my days, we were writing websites and notepad, all of them. I mean, yeah, I did that as well, but that's not exactly convenient. <laughs> okay, RMRF cache, yarn start. Right, so now I think the object should look a bit nicer because the literal should actually be parsed into proper values. Uh, what, undefined, how is it? So it did parse the literals, but instead of catching and, f oh, God damn it, copied the wrong thing. <laughs> Right, uh, scoping issues, yarn start. All right, come on, we're nearly there. Okay, cool. Um, I wonder if we should take, if we should replace the prefixes with like human readable forms, because that would be nicer, right? I guess, I guess let's do this. Yeah, so if we got the quads, I guess if we end prefixes, right? So I'm gonna do that. Uh, which which thing are you talking about? Um, this sort of, what sort of programming? I mean, I'm not sure I can um, understand what, what exactly you mean by that. Okay, so we got the object of prefixes that has the key as the prefix and the value is the URI and we wanna go through the keys on our result and swap the URI substring for the key of that. Uh, okay, let me not try not to blow my mind out while I'm trying doing this. So we want to take object keys of result, right? This is going to be our prefix. I uh, know this is going to be our um, predicates. And uh, react angular view and the rest. But come on, they're not that complex. It's like they don't have to be complex. Especially with the React, the thing is, I think is one of the simplest ones because it doesn't force you to learn anything else but JavaScript itself. 
this is like the best thing about it because both angular view svelte and so on and so forth they actually tell you hey we have our own syntax our own way of building pages and templating go ahead and learn it while react does the opposite and says hey Here's actually JavaScript and you can just write JavaScript and use a bit of JSX to render tags, which is, in my opinion, incredibly easy to understand. Okay, but uh, anyway, let me just go back to this. So let's go with, well, no, 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 for each. Okay, so we got the predicate. Now we got the, um, let's call it fixed predicate is gonna be, Right. Oh God, how do we go about this? Okay, so we got the second array. Of course, it has to be the other way around. Oh man, okay. Um, keys, prefixes, okay. Const, map, okay. So now we got the array of URLs. So URLs find URL so that predicate includes URL, right? So we find matching prefix first. If matching prefix exists, we're gonna say that fixed prefix is gonna be predicate replace Matching prefix with, uh, oh God, okay, I cannot actually do that, right? I need to map, okay, I actually need to map to the object that has URL and has prefix that is P. This is what I wanna do, and this is predicate includes Okay, this is what I want to do. So we take the URL and this is matching prefix, matching prefix URL, and then we're going to replace the matching prefix P. Um, and then let's just do, uh, not, uh, like I didn't think we need reduce here because we, re I mean, we could go reduce, but okay, for now, let me just focus on making this correct, okay? Fixing prefix. Uh, predicate, fix it prefix and match prefix. Okay, I think that should work. Oh boy, are you promoting Simon on Switch? Uh, <laughs> yes, Kevin. Of course, I'm promoting Simon on Switch. <laughs> um. Okay. Let's see. Did I all done? Okay. So this is no. This is the end already. Where's my previous console log. Uh, oh, it didn't find it, I guess. Should tweak your yarn start command. Uh, what do you mean tweak my yarn start command? Fixing prefix predicate. Okay. Um, man, I feel like I'm screwing something up, but I just don't see what. Okay, you know what, let's just Run this ref cache, yarn start. Right. Oh, you mean, okay. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I mean, I don't really, I, I'm not going to be doing this once we finish building the plugin, right? So that's not a very helpful thing to do. Okay, fixing prefix. Uh, publication. Okay, why is it undefined? Uh, I guess. Predicate includes your. Okay, so first of all, um, console log urls let us just log everything out and see if i screwed anything so right cache yarn start don't delete cache send it to me <laughs> i mean feel free to send your cache to me as well i don't mind that <laughs> okay uh yeah that is a lot of logging so we got the url that is okay this is yeah this looks correct ish why does it not? So there's the AKSW org slash schema. Why does it not? Why does it not include it? This is a bit weird. So let me just copy this and we're gonna investigate. 
So let's see, node, uh, right? So we want this URL, right? Here's our, whoops, here's our URL. And includes, did I, is, is, wait, includes should work, right? I mean, I could use index off obviously, but no, but it has the trailing slash, so it should, true. Um, alrighty then, why are you not happy? So we use URLs is an array, is it? Okay, it is an array, right? It is an array, okay. You, oh God, <laughs> I hate myself. I just absolutely had to mistype the bloody thing and type the L, the capital L. Oh, so <laughs> my life is pain. Okay, right, um, fix it, press. So now I think, that <laughs> God damn it. Yes, of course, Sp spend 15 minutes trying to see that I mistyped the variable name. Oh boy, never change. Software development is, is yes. Okay, so let's see. Fix prefix, uh, undefined, uh, why is it? Oh, because it should be prefix, there we go. Run minus ref, cache, uh, line 54. No, this seems actually lowercase, so this one is correct. It was the other way around. I, like I used the capital L over here on line 49, and this one essentially screwed everything up. <laughs> okay. Um, Right, it has to be prefix, so it has to be this, right? So we need the colon as well over there. Cache, we are nearly there. So I think if I am if I did everything correct, we now should see nice prefixed URLs. There we go, yes, yes, okay. Uh, uh, this is okay, yeah, 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 okay, so this looks good. Uh, but now we need to actually replace it in the, I guess, yeah, I guess it would be better to just reduce it really. So we map, um, and we return, it's gonna be, fixed prefix and the value is gonna be result from predicate, right? So we do that. And if we didn't find it, we just return predicate, predi, pre, what, no, predis? What, what is predis? There we go. So we just return predicate result predicate. Okay, and now we need to reduce that. Accumulator value and uh, we really just do accumulator, but no, and value. And we start with an empty object and we say that const res is this, and we just say, uh, I guess that's too much. I guess we should also sign in the prefixes in there. Uh, that is broken, it should be in quotes, uh, brackets, and this should be res. Okay, I think that should produce exactly what we want. Uh, but starry, starry, yeah, starry up, starry up, yarn. Okay, <laughs> I feel like we should start wrapping this stream up because, because I'm just losing my mind here. All right, uh, so we got the URL, we got the prefixes, we got the nicely looking object with strings and URLs over there. It seems to be fine. Cool. All right, so now we just need to write that into the into the um, GraphQL, right? So because we, we have the GraphQL backend that we will be querying. Okay. Da -da -dum, da -da 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 -dum. Right, so we do this and in our so subject is result subject. Object is, you know what? I guess this is gonna be data and we're gonna say that the final object is gonna be data and prefixes because we do wanna have access to prefixes in the end as well. 
And meanwhile, we can also put this object in here because why not? Uh, because I don't know if we're going to have reference to it later on. So result objects and uh, I hope that works. So if that works, then theoretically, once we execute this, we should be able to go into the GraphQL interface and just query it. Well, at least there is no errors, which is a good start. But let's see, there now should be Simon bin RDF. Okay, then, I mean, <laughs> right. So there's the data, there's the, oh, it actually gives, um, it actually shows you all the properties. This is really awesome. So you can actually get the whole graph just like this. Right, mm, that is, hmm. There might be a better way to represent this over here. Okay, but this is a good start. This is a good start. It doesn't have any children, doesn't have any parents. Uh, we do have the prefixes as well. Okay, and the prefixes, yeah, okay. So this, this looks fine, this looks fine. Um, but I don't want to store it under Simon bin RD. <laughs> okay, right, so how do we, we need to change that. <laughs> I don't want to put that burden on Simon only to carry all our RDF schema. <laughs> all right, um, let me think. So this is this is the ID, right? This is what we. This is the node ID. So I guess we should look at how the YAML plugin does it because I imagine they somehow uh, plugin options is function is string is array. Faith node. Oh, okay. So this is they created for if it's a folder, they create a dear name. Mm hmm. Plugin options type name is string type name. So if it fits the type name, it creates the type name nodes, I guess. Why to result object on transform? Uh, no, there's only one result object in there. We got the result object and then you got result subject, which is the ID essentially. So object is only one. Uh, but okay, let me try to figure out how exactly do they create. So create parent child link parent nodes. What is this node? Node is this. Okay, get type node. <laughs> Let me think. So this get, where do they call the get type function? Okay, if it's an array, then it calls, okay, for each content. Okay, if it's plain object, then transform parse content, uh, get type, node object is array false. Okay, so it uses this get type function directly on the transform. And this get type is gonna be like, okay, if it's, so get plug, so if there's no plugin options, it's gonna go to this. How do you, okay, this doesn't seem very helpful. We need like a way, <laughs> where do we find it? Okay, um, let me think for a second. So we need a way to define a parent for all of those, right? And like they do this all file or all markdown. I guess we could like take a look at the markdown plugin or something. Let's have a look. Transformer plugin um, remark. There we go. There's also a dummy index. Yep. Okay. Uh, Gatsby node. One node create. So they split it into separate files. Okay, uh, text markdown. Okay, it only handles the markdown. Load not content, load gray matter. Markdown for matter, markdown node, content, create digest. This is panic. How, wait, how do they create? They have another thing which is extend node type. What does this do? That is a ton of code. Okay, then. Uh, okay, this is the remark node, which is something different, I think. 
Seems to be that something to do with AST and processing, I guess. Uh, um, I want to, so right now we have this node inserted and it works fine, but it is inserted as a top level node. I want to put it under something. I'm just trying to figure out what's the best way to do that. I mean, I guess, I guess we could just like go ahead and no, but that, that like if I create one more node here, it's not gonna be that nice, right? Uh, how do I do that? Oh boy, okay. How do they, okay, so this is definitely not here. This is something to do with AST. Can't you just append it to level one? Uh, maybe I can, but I don't see a way to create a level one node essentially, uh, because this, this, this on create node function is invoked repeatedly, right? So how do they do that mark? Oh, okay. There we go. There's the markdown node. This is how they create it. Uh, create node ID markdown remark. Children type markdown remark. So we got this tie. Yeah, type is fine. Do they mark down internal because of them? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. How do they? Is that because it's just one? Okay, you know what? Let's try creating another person in. in um, Oh, where's my XW? So let's try making it. Maybe it's just because it's only one person, but that doesn't seem right. Okay, so we have to figure out how to properly take Kunal and just uh, copy this stuff here. No, TTL. Okay, uh, the, okay, he has a very long description. Okay, let me just copy the headers from here. Something we don't need anymore put the prefix over here. Okay, um, validate. TL validation, please validate this thing. Uh, AKSW org, okay. We got AKSW org prefix that is undefined. I will take that, that is not a big problem. Oh, right, because we changed it to website, true. Okay, I think this should be fine, right? Sysont. Okay, there's some another things. Where is sys sysont? There it is. What is you? I don't know what used there, but uh, fine, we can do that. And are you working now? Uh, da. Oh, come on. Website. Okay. Yes, where or no okay good i think now that should be valid scos no now you want scos ontology god damn it scos there we go core copy that come on okay are you valid now yes you are okay cool thing that holds all nodes uh, they have something called source nodes okay i mean we'll get there at one point let's just try Killing cache, yarn start. Let's see. So I'm guessing now it's just going to create two top nodes. One is going to be Simon Bin, the other one is going to be Kunal. But uh, let's see. Okay. Right, there we go. Reload. Yeah, okay. So now it's just put them. Wait, why is there only one node? Where... Oh, no, there's the Simon. Okay, cool. So both of them are here. Right, so we have to somehow put it under one node. And we have to I mean let's okay, let's have a look at the what was it? Transform yeah CSV for example. I mean they gotta create that stuff somehow, right? So it's gotta be So wait, let's see. Transformer CSV and then all so they have this all letter CSV here as well. So they should somehow create it, right? Question is how exactly they do that. So convert to JSON. Da, 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 da. Okay, this is we already do that, right? So we filter out non-REF data. 
We parse, we convert it to JSON. Also do that. We don't care about the array stuff. So parse content map children not id type node name csv okay each array create part node node i still don't understand how they create all content like wow how does this is this because of this thing this no but that's like the id should be present right type uh, make the type a lot smarter. This assumes the parent node is a file, which is fine. Uh, God, okay. So we like we get this parent child link, right? Oh boy, how does this work? Um, okay. Gatsby transform. I'm sure I'm not the first one who asked this parent node to ask this question um proof create no documentation for parent fields i hope to generate the new nodes based on transformer json check if they see file path root internal type and call file uh So, okay, so there's the source node. This is what you were talking about, right? Uh, but why they don't use that? Uh, Node.js API source nodes. Where was it? I bet. What? No, sort of. Source nodes. Extension point to tell plugins to source nodes. This API is called during the Gatsby bootstrap sequence. Source plugins use this hook to create nodes. This API is called exactly once. Okay, this is... So this sounds like exactly what we want. The only question is how the shit do we use it within the plugin? We gotta find out in a second. Okay. Um, do, 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 source node action, create node ID. So actions, my data. Um, I mean, we. so I don't really care about the data itself. We just need to create the blank node essentially, right? Create node ID is how do we we did the ID in this way. And I guess in this case, we're just gonna go all data RDF parent null children type RDF media type text turtle i guess node content uh we don't need any content here i think that should work so basically we just do this right node meta uh yeah okay all right so we don't need this as well. Why did, uh, okay, there's some ESLint complaints. Okay, but the question is, how do we add, will it automatically add nodes to it? How does, how, I still don't completely understand how does it work. Okay, let's try restarting that and see what happens. I am pretty curious. Uh, da, 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 da. if you define this hook, Gatsby will exactly want to know it. Probably finished notes, create no documentation. No, okay, so let's see. So this finished. Uh, where's our GraphQL? Uh, all it creates all Kunal chart. <laughs> yeah, that's really helpful. <laughs> Okay. What? So this is executed once per file. How the hell do you use that? Um, 
And we get an exam. So I kind of starting to get how it works, but not entirely sure how you use it to create one common node. Uh, no, this is source plugin, right? Transformation, foreign key, union types. Uh, Yeah, this is the files, right? Internal media type, boom, create node, we do that. This is very confusing. Okay, how do I, I mean, I get the idea, right? So it takes the file, it processes it, and then we can call the plugin on it. So we create all stuff, but this is not helpful. Like this is not what I want, right? This is the node and this is our data. We want to put this under one umbrella. First of all, I'm not sure why it uses the node name there. Well, it shouldn't actually be. It should all data RDF. I don't know, would that make it better? At this point, I'm already just sitting here and guessing how it works, but I guess that's not very helpful. So we got parent, ID of the parent node, the node derived from another node set node is a parent, otherwise it must be null. So I guess we can provide the parent to say that whatever node is the parent of them, but the question is where do we create this parent, right? Uh, can, I wonder, can you just give it a parent that is gonna be, here's the question. Can we just, okay, so we don't care about this anymore. Can we just say that we have Can we just do this and integrate it into Can we just do this? Would that work? Will it auto create the parent? Because if it would, then it basically solves all of our problems, right? Uh, okay, I guess it, <laughs> I guess it wouldn't. Uh, parent fails because parent must be a string. Oh, okay, so it expects an ID, just an ID. Okay. Um, yeah, no. Um, hmm. Okay, node ID is the parent, so node is our file. Right, so what kind of parameters do we have here as well? We got actions, action options. So what is the action options? What can we actually do there? Um, all right, this is not helpful. Action options, please, what do they do? Um, that my ad blockers is something else. What is what is going on? It's no sentry shouldn't interfere with it, right? But oh boy, okay. Um, right back to Google we go. So what does the action options do? Where are they? No, that doesn't help me. Our APIs plugins are run. Action objects above. Blah, blah, blah. Actions right. Okay, so there's the create nodes. How does create node works? Can we create the same node multiple times? Node ID must be globally unique. Returns from this result, all triggered. Yes, can I? So, okay, let me revert it back to this. 
So this theoretically should create the same node for all, right? <laughs> now we're coming to the boring part of my everyday job where you sit and try to figure out for half an hour how the hell does this thing work. Okay, uh, internal fails because content digest is required. Okay. Okay, I guess we, um, so we can revert that all the way back. So you need some content and some content digest. Turtle contents. Mm, yeah, I guess let's just revert it completely to our first. There we go. Okay. Contents. Just add description. Old, old, parsed. REF files data, right? And we can just leave that in here. Turtle type's gonna be REF. No, and this is gonna be um, all REF data. Okay, so theoretically, since I'm creating the same node again every on every run, that should be only one node, right? I, or maybe it starts throwing, then we can just catch it and ignore the rest of the errors. Not entirely sure how that will work. So let's see. Uh, right, we don't need that. We don't need that. This is our GraphQL. Is it started? Yes, it is. Okay, we got all REF. Cool. So now we should be able Oh, I did I just mistype the damn thing. Oh, does the ID has nothing to do with um Oh, I think I'm starting to get it. So wait a second. So I guess the ID I write for it doesn't really matter because the name of it is derived from the type. Now I get it, I, th I think at least. <laughs> we got to test my theory in a second. <laughs> all right, come on. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it's still called all RDF. And uh, we should be able to basically reference it over here now, right? We can stop that. We can edit this to have parents instead of node ID. Uh, <laughs> create node RDF nodes, parent nodes. Um, I guess we just create another link that says parent nodes all ref data and child node is our um, is our node right so this should nest it under it i hope come on okay well we still have this stuff here and it doesn't uh doesn't have any children's right so this doesn't work um okay 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 here's the question what if instead of giving it node id we say this is all ref data right and we do that so then in this case, it shouldn't create the node for the file at all, but rather it should nest it under the new node that we created. And here's the question, is that actually, actually correct? No, it's not. So it still creates this stuff. Oh, I think, am I just over complicating it? Wait a second. Do I just need to say that our type is RDF. Is that all I need to do? Because this is just type RDF, right? Is that all I have? But if, if that's all I needed to do all this time, <laughs> this is gonna be very, very silly.
Okay. Come on. And it looks like it is indeed what I needed to do all this time. Because now it has children, right? Oh, but why does it have? Okay, so it has three nodes and I guess we could just select like data, both name to see the names of the people. What is, what is this node? Why is the data empty? Okay, this is not something I wanted to see there. Is that because of this thing? No, this is great. So does that mean that we actually don't need this at all? So like we just give it similar type and that's it. Uh, what ad block do you use? I use uBlock Origin and I've been shilling for it for ages because it's amazing. So if you want a good ad blocking experience, go for it. No, no, that's not what I want. Just, just, uh, there we go. Okay. Right, so we compiled, right? So there's no errors, that's good. And we now got all RDF, we got edges, we got nodes, got ID. Yep, looks like I was severely overthinking it and you just need to give them the same ID and then they are automatically grouped. This is kind of awesome. <laughs> um, I'm thinking that maybe using the full URLs for predicates might be actually a better idea, so. Okay, so we definitely don't need this bit here anymore. This was severely overthinking everything. And I guess I am, okay, you know what? Let me just get at this, get commit basic ref plugin. Uh, and uh, I want to remove this, just say results, right? Um, right, so we don't need URLs anymore. So this is gonna simplify this stuff quite a bit. Can just do this and uh, we start. So I think now we should actually see the whole GraphQL working properly with the full predicates, which would make it, uh, I, I, like, I'm not sure if it would make it easier or, har or harder to work with. We're gonna find out in a second. Um, no, that's still, okay, I guess it's still cached. Let's restart that. So it should not, uh, we should get the full URLs, right? Okay, come on. Yep, uh, what? No, filter fourth name on RDF data at object field, what? Wait, what? Cannot query filter. Oh, god damn, because it's no longer fourth name. Oh no, that definitely looks worse. <laughs> All right, yeah, no. Let us put that back. That looks terrible. Okay, so I think this is good enough, right? So this, for now, at least as a proof of concept, this is perfect. So now we need to make a template for the person and then render it as a proper thing. So um, let's call it person page JS, right? I'm gonna copy the markdown page. I'm gonna paste it here. And in this case, we're gonna query um, RDF. We are gonna query, I guess we need to include, oh yeah, we got the subject. No, we got, we got, ugh. We have to include the pass somehow, right? Mm. Okay. So we need, I guess, just, just let's put the path option over there. And then what we need is data. And from data, we're gonna need uh, yeah, okay, well, I, have to, I have to recompile it. <laughs> that is not gonna be nice to work with. 
Okay, um, yeah. So kill the cache. We need to edit the plugin to add the path. And uh, so subject um, const base path is going to be URLs find so that URL uh, yeah no we actually want to search for prefix right prefix prefix those websites so we find our websites and this is going to be URL and then path is going to be a result subject replace a uh, base path with nothing okay i already removed cache yes good okay so theoretically we should now get a nice ish results from graphql that we can then consume in the page uh okay tries to compile it and fails terribly so let us not do that okay can you please build okay there we go right please start up our graphql come on come on come on there we go all right, so now if we go to all RDF and we say edges, or we, I mean, we actually can go to RDF as well, right? We got the path now, yeah. Okay, cool, so this looks correct. Okay, um, do, 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 do. this is fine. So now we go back to our component and say we need to query RDF with pass that equals path and we need to query the data that is um, fourth name, I guess family name. I I don't like. It's... You okay? You know what? For now, it's fine. Title for matter. Okay, in this case, we're gonna get ref, and then we're gonna get. Um. data and then we're going to deconstruct data into fourth name and fourth family name right and we just say def h1 okay um right so this theoretically should render kill the cache yarn star. I think I don't need to kill the cache anymore actually, so I should stop doing that. <laughs> right, so this should compile. Seems like it does compile. GraphQL query non page component, yeah, yeah, yeah whatever, was fine. That's okay, cool. So now we should define um where we, we did that in Gatsby node, I think, right? There we go. Okay. So this is page templates. Uh, let's call it markdown templates. And then we're gonna have um, person template. I think I called it, did I call it person templates? Yes, person page. Okay, so this is, let's rename it to MD results. Oh, okay, so this only will, we don't need to return that, so I'm just gonna do this. This is, yeah, I guess let's just do it below. So this is gonna be like a markdown section. It's gonna be RDF section, right? So we got, I guess I can just copy the whole thing. So we got, this is gonna be RDF results and we're gonna go all RDF. Um, don't care about sort edges nodes so in this case we want where's my person page path okay so it's ages no yeah okay exactly if there is 
RDF and we reject it with RDF error. Otherwise, RDF data, all RDF edges for each node, node path, component, um, yeah, RDF, what, wait, wait, how did I call it? Person template. Uh, that ha that will have to change, right? Because we would have to somehow distinguish between people and other things in RDF, but this that's already a more complex topic. Okay, let's see if that actually works. So theoretically now we should be able to go to Kunal, for example, and uh, that should load, right? Uh, whoops. Oh, no, 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 no. That is not what I wanted. And that gives us an error. Front matter is not defined. I guess I... Where is it? In person page. Where Where am I using front matter? Oh, god damn it. Um, right. So let's go... Both name. Both family. Uh, no, family name, there we go. Okay. We actually render. Uh, no, still not, okay. Can I read property data of, un of null? Um, okay, I guess we need to recompile it maybe. Am I running the query correctly here? Here's the question. So we query path and then data name and family name. Yes, this seems correct. And this for some reason gives us data of null. So the query returns null for some reason. Path equals path. Did I write this thing correctly? <laughs> okay, so this seems to work. What is our path actually? Um, what is dollar path? Is it, does it include slash? Because then we would need to go, we would need to change the plug. I guess it probably includes slash, right? So the path is gonna be this and then this. Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, yarn starts. All right, uh, I guess, yeah, I guess it probably should include uh, the starting slash because otherwise this is a different path, okay? Yeah, there's something we don't need and reloads and hey, it actually works. Uh, but I guess, yeah, Kunal, oh, okay. Fourth name includes both. Okay, oh, that, was, that was unnecessary, but we actually managed to make it work. That is kind of cool. <laughs> okay, um, git add, git commit add basic rendering for ref people resources. But we actually have a way to filter it, right? So there should be RDF type, which tell, uh, right, I could click it, uh, of course, of course, I cannot query it because I stopped it. So what I'm thinking is, is that this template, uh, do, 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 there's the people template. So what we could do is we could say path, um, sorry, what? Oh. Yes. Okay, so basically we want to say path and as well with data. Um, do, 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 do. Or data. So, okay, do I filter it like this? Um, RDF type equal this, right? No. Unknown argument RDF type and field data. Um, GraphQL filter. How do I filter stuff? 
feed filter. Oh, it's just no way. That's filter QL. Okay. So I say filter like this. Is that how you do it in GraphQL? <laughs> no. Filter on data field. Um right. How do I filter this stuff properly? Do I need to do it on the top level? Anyone in the chat writes GraphQL? How do I properly do that? Sorting, filter, type query. Um, so data, can I just do, um, no, ref type. So I just do it here, is that how I do it? Yeah, there we go. So essentially we can just use this query, right? And uh, no, not here, which means, yeah, uh, okay, how do I add the limit there? Um, limit like this, uh, nope, colon or something, no, should be docs on the right side. Oh, that's a very good pointer, thank you. <laughs> okay, um. Limit, limit int. Is it like a separate limit like this? No, unexpected. Yeah, that's that's what I thought. It looks weird. How do I combine both? I mean, I don't really need a limit in this case. We don't think we have that many resources, but still, it would be good to know how to do that properly. Um, come on. GraphQL reference, basic query, longer query. Uh, where's my JavaScript? Thank you very much. Hello, where's my, where's my code? No, I don't even, what is happening? Where's, where's, where's my snippets? Builder content in drafts. I feel like, I am doing it kind of correctly, but not quite. No, that's not right. Hmm. But if, okay. No, but that's okay. So here limit doesn't work, but here it works. Is it because it's all RDF? Uh, okay, all are, oh, right, because I'm picking the wrong, okay. I am writing the wrong query here. Okay, right, 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 right. Whoops, no, that's not what I wanted. Let's do this, edges, node. Okay. And we got the limit working, and now I think I should be able to do the filter properly, right? Um, so this means edges, no, data, ref, no wait, data, okay, and uh, whoops, that is too much, uh, what was the, that was the type, right? And unexpected string where, oh, 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 oh. This is what I want to do, right? Okay. Right, we finally, I think, so this is, did it, I guess I just need the first line. Yep, okay. So we can actually try to create a different resource here as I don't know, um, projects or something and go and copy one of the, uh, what? No, that's not what I want. Uh, take projects, uh, where's my source code? There we go. Okay, um, projects, projects, projects. Take one of the projects, Geyser, for example, copy that stuff. Okay. Um, 
Kaiser RDF. Oh no, it should be TTL, right? I forgot TTL. Okay. You know what? I don't even care about the prefixes. No, I mean we need need to modify. There's AKSW. There is projects. There is site DCT. Do okay. There's a ton of prefixes. So, okay, so we want to take the projects prefix and modify it to be localhost 8080. That's it basically. Okay. So in theory, right now when we query the GraphQL, we should see three resources. But once we, okay, I don't care about the limit, don't care about the filter. Um, what? Probably a problem logging. Wait, 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 what? Where's my, where's my logging? Oh God, okay, console went crazy. Let me kill it and restart it. That sometimes happens for some reason. Okay, there we go. Okay, kill the cache and yarn starts. Can read property URL of undefined. Uh, okay, so this is a bug in our plugin. Where is, oh, come on, console start working. Note 46, 46 is this one. Okay, uh, oh right, because it has to be called website. Okay, yeah, 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 sure, sure. We can rename this to website. That's not a problem. Okay. Right, I forgot that I actually hard coded that. It's sub perfect, but again, we're prototyping here. Okay. So now, right, so we got the geyser, but in theory, we should only have two pages here, right? So we should have Kunal and we should have Simon. And if I type geyser, we should not get anything. Perfect, it actually works. Cool. Um, so yeah, okay. Um, so we added example project resource and only render people. Yep, try to build the app. Uh, that's a good point. Let us try to build that. And uh, we are, sh yeah, I'm terrible at this. Okay, we also should try to deploy that and see how exactly it works. Okay, so we got that. I don't care about this. I imagine there's something like yarn build. Yep, yarn build. Okay, and then I'm gonna use Exaframe to deploy it to my server to just uh, see how exactly it works. And also to check, I'm, I'm also quite curious how, how, the, um, how big the bundles will be. Like it's not like we have there anything, you know, amazing, but. Okay, 23 seconds, not too terrible considering we are running on VSL. So public is what we want, right? Yep, and uh, so let's see, exaframe endpoint, we are on my, um, and it is, uh, let's call it Gatsby test, uh, Gatsby test codezen.net, and we don't care about everything else. I probably shouldn't have enabled the throttling, so let's just edit this a bit. We don't need that. We just need this stuff. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And uh, we just deploy that.
Right, uh, so we can copy this and go here and uh, connection is not private. Yeah, that's fine. It's still getting the uh, still getting the certificate, so it should be up in a few seconds, and then we can we should be able to get Kunal, and we should be able to get Simon, and it actually works as expected. This is pretty damn good, to be honest. Okay, here's the second question: How big is the bundle size? It is eighty-eight kilobytes. That's decent. Like it's yeah, considering there's like React and everything. And I imagine if we go to a different page, as uh, the page JSON transfers. Uh, what about audits? Uh, yeah, we can run. We can run the audits. Why not? So let's try. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, so this works. I will need to make a repo and push it then. <laughs> They've added some hints now, that's cool. I don't think last time I ran it, it was here. 75% of mobile users were using 2G or 3G, okay. BBC has seen a loss of 10% of the users for every extra second of page load. Sorry, we ran into an error. Oh, come on, is it because of HTTPS? I guess, yeah, I guess it's just might be going a bit crazy because um, traffic is not yet received the HTTPS certificate, which might take a couple of minutes. Come on, you should get it already, right? No? Yeah, let's try running it again, I guess. What? Okay, here's the question. If I open incognito window and it's already HTTP, okay, so it's actually already HTTPS, it's just this page is Slightly outdated, I guess. Let's let's try running it here and encoding tool. Okay, hoping up, uh, hoping this won't bug out on us. Hey, <laughs> that was a fast demo, oh, dude. Okay, there's some accessibility issues, so the cache cache flags are not exactly perfect because I'm using the default Nginx Docker image, but hey. And there is, yeah, there's the bunch of accessibility things because I just use the link component without any additional fields, which makes perfect sense. And uh, yeah, there's no offline. So progressive web app is obviously that, but it's a pretty good score, I would say for just scaffolding the app and running. So there you go. It's actually quite impressive. All right. Um, yeah, I think that will be it for today's stream. If you guys have any questions, feel free to send them into the chat right now. I will go ahead and uh, throw that into the GitHub so that I um, actually have to continue. I mean, I have to continue working on that. Um, Dice websites. Dice group website prototype. Can you please check? I mean, it is HTML, right? It's supposed to be static website. We got the index HTML and uh, there's the Simon bin index HTML. There's the Kunal index HTML. There's the page two index HTML. So it is like a proper index HTML with a static content that gets hydrated once you load the page with React, which is kind of awesome, which means you can do dynamic uh, things uh, on your static website, which is kind of pretty cool. This is something you cannot do with Jekyll, even though you know it's it's also static website generator and it's quite nice, but it's not as flexible. All right, uh, let me just push this stuff, da, 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 add this and push origin master. Okay, um, yeah, once again, guys, if you have any questions or suggestions, Feel free to throw them into the chat right now. If no, we can uh, wrap this up here and uh, just uh, go uh, with go on with our day, I guess. Okay, we got this starter starter readme. I have to change that, but uh, yeah. Okay, all right. Seems like no questions. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you find something interesting here. Um, as usual, if you miss something, the VOD will be available immediately on. Uh, Twitch or after some time on YouTube. 
If you are watching this later and have some questions, we have a Discord server. Feel free to join to ask me. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. So thank you guys for watching and I see you next time. Bye.